Hey guys, this is Professor Abood, and I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of preparation for the lab practical. So, um, anyhow, for lab one, what you are going to need is to know your lab equipment. So that's pictured on this page. So for example, here we have a beaker and an Erlenmeyer flask, a wide mouth bottle. Um, anyhow, if you go through these and learn all of this equipment, that will be helpful for the, for the test. Um, so you know you need to know how to do the difference method and the difference method is fairly straightforward um, so obviously if you have something that measures like let's say 10 grams and that's just the the beaker itself and then you put some substance in it and it weighs 12 grams for the beaker plus you know we'll say this chemical whatever and so the difference method all you have to do is take the weight of the beaker alone and the weight of the flask or of the chemical plus the beaker and find the difference between them. So you would typically take the larger number first, so 12 grams minus 10 grams. And so that would tell you the weight of this object right in here is 2 grams. So that's a real simple calculation for la uh, that, that you need to know for lab one. Um, you also need to know how to measure the meniscus. So obviously if we go back into here and if you're looking straight at the uh, at your graduated cylinder and you see the little tick marks right here you're gonna find that the liquid level kind of goes down like that so what you need to do is mentally draw a little line that comes across here and observe where the meniscus is and that bottom point will be what the measurement that you actually have to get for the meniscus is. Um, so that covers lab one. Lab two, you need to know how to do the density calculation and the density calculation is fairly simple. Uh, you simply take the mass of an object and divide it by the volume. And typically this measurement is in grams per milliliter doesn't always have to be but that's generally how you would do it so if we have an object that measures that weighs two grams and it takes up one milliliter of space then the density of this object would just be two grams divided by one milliliter so it would have a density of two grams per milliliter alright uh, you also need to know how to do the density calculation and if you go into the lab manual, into lab two, it has a nice equation in here for both density and calculating the percent error. So in calculating the percent error, what you have to do is you have to take your theoretical value and subtract your calculated value and divide by your theoretical value. And it's important that you note that this is in absolute value. So for example, if we have uh, if we weigh this, once again, our beaker problem, if we weigh this ob this chemical and we find that it's the, well, we know that its theoretical value is, let's say, 3 grams, and, well, what if we weighed 4 grams? So our value was actually 4 grams, so then we divide that by the theoretical, and we take the absolute value of that. So if we multiply that, or if we do this, this, this will give us basically negative 1 over 3, but since it's in absolute terms, we would get 1 third, which is about 33, or 0.33, so we would get 1 third, which would then equal 0.33, and of course we have to turn this into a percentage which is right here according to the uh, equation and so that would turn into 33 percent error okay so that basically covers lab two lab three it starts getting a little bit complicated here so you need to know how to measure percent composition and you need to know how to do a mixture separation uh, including dissolving, filtering, and subliming. So if we go back, way back in your brain, to the mixture separation, you need to know how to do this calculation right here. So, for example, if we want to calculate how, what, what the weight of, let's say, 
hydrogen and water is. So we know that hydrogen weighs one uh, gram per mole, and we know that oxygen weighs 16 grams per mole. So now, if we go into here, we got the weight of our mixture is going to be H2O, so there's going to be two hydrogens and one oxygen, which will add up to a total of 18 grams per mole. And since we're trying to find the percent composition of hydrogen, our equation would look like, if we go back to here, percent composition, and I'll just put a C for composition of hydrogen, is going to be equal to the weight of our component, which is, since there's two uh, hydrogens that will contribute two grams per mole, divided by the weight of our mixture, which is 18 grams per mole, And obviously, you know, we'll have to times that by 100 once we get that calculation. So I'll trust that you can plug that into your calculator, and we will move on. So that's how to calculate percent composition. And now we know need to know how to do a mixture separation. So if you remember back in this lab, lab 3, we have uh, separation of components. Uh, and the components that we had were ammonium chloride, sodium chloride, and silicon dioxide. So if you remember, we actually sublimed the ammonium chloride, which just means when you take a, uh, a solid and turn it straight into a gas, skipping the liquid phase. Um, we also had to separate sodium chloride and silicon dioxide, which if you remember, silicon dioxide is like sand. So. Um, what we did was we know that sodium chloride is an ionic compound that's soluble in water. So, if you mix sodium chloride and salt, or I'm sorry, and sand in water, the sodium chloride will dissolve and then you can use filtration to capture the sand in your mixture and that will then be basically covered dissolving, filtering, and subliming. You might get a question on your, uh, on the test that covers that. Okay, so, and like I said, that this is just kind of the problem that I just went over. Okay, and that brings us to lab four.